human body is really, really failing in almost, in almost every way. I want to live to be thousands of years old. I don't want to die. I don't understand why anybody would. Hacker dringen inzwischen nicht nur in Kommunikationssysteme, sondern auch in unsere Körper ein. Unabhängig von der etablierten Medizin arbeiten Biohacker daran, die Grenzen der Evolution zu überwinden. Ich bin in Essen, um den Biohacker Tim Cannon zu treffen. Tim wird hier einen Chip in seinen Unterarm implantiert bekommen, der ihm erlaubt, seine eigenen biometrischen Daten aufzuzeichnen und zu übertragen. Ich möchte herausfinden, ob diese Technologie uns einer Zeit näher bringt, in der jeder ein Cyborg sein kann. My name is Tim Cannon. Uh, I'm with a company called Grindhouse Wetware. We do biohacking essentially. We build devices that are meant to integrate with the human body. We basically focus on the, the merging of man and machine in a kind of a DIY context. So this is the circadia. Uh, it's uh, somewhat large. Once this chip is implanted, What are you going to do with it? Simply because it simply currently reads my temperature data, I'm basically going to use that to determine if there are certain things that are causing my temperature to fall or rise. Also, I'm probably going to set it up so that it'll send me a text message if it thinks I'm getting a fever. We'll turn on the light on low, and uh, that'll go. As you can see here, we have uh, rates for various signals and where they're being read from. And this can work on any Android system, so I could get that on my phone and uh, walk past you and hack your arm. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people tend to ask me, aren't you afraid of that? I'm not really afraid of that. Uh, I'm, I'm a hacker, I'm doing this, this is very fun, and, it, and it's meant to capture people's imagination. Tell me about the procedure. What, what's going to happen is um, I have this tattoo here, and I'm going to receive an incision here on the tattoo. My skin will be lifted and separated away from its fatty tissues, and the device will be inserted into the pocket that is created, and then it will be sutured shut. Isn't that gonna hurt like hell? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really, really gonna hurt. We, uh, we are not going to be using any anesthetic. I have to do the whole thing, as they say, in the, in the uh, piercing and body modded community, I got to do it raw dog. <laughs> so here we go. This is going right in my arm. Tim and I made us on the way to the Body Modification Conference am Rande der Essener Innenstadt. Dort treffe ich mich mit Steve Harworth, der Tim den Chip einsetzen wird. Als Flash Engineer führt er seit 20 Jahren Implantationen innerhalb der Szene durch und ist hier eine Legende. How did your whole collaboration with Tim start? How did you meet him? Tim emailed me and asked me about the, the process of whether or not I could do it. I told him that if the configuration was appropriate, it was possible. We went and had dinner, discussed it, and then uh, about four months, five months later, he sent me his first prototype. Doctors don't do what I do. In, in the United States, the American Medical Association says modifying the body away from what society considers normal or pleasing because to some people breasts out to here are pleasing um, that, that to, for a doctor to do that he'd lose his license. This is the first non-medical computer device ever produced. When we, when we put this in it, it will make history. Das, was Steve und Tim hier machen, mag auf den ersten Blick gar nicht so spektakulär wirken, aber mit ihrem Do-it-yourself-Ansatz sind sie viel radikaler als alles, was gemeinhin als Science-Fiction durchgeht. Tim bekommt jetzt gerade den Chip implantiert. Die einzigen, die bei diesem Eingriff dabei sind, sind Tim, Steve und Steves Assistentin. Ich bin gespannt, ob sie am Ende das Ergebnis bekommen werden, worauf sie so lange hingearbeitet haben. Ich wollte Tim direkt nach der Operation treffen und warte auf ihn in der Lobby seines Hotels. Hey, how's it going? Well, how's it going with you? How did it go? It went well. It went well. A lot of pain. I'm you know, sad. a lot of a lot of grunting. A lot of. Yeah. You know, Shit. It's pretty large. That you know. is big. Yeah, as we expected. You know, that sort of thing. You know, obviously you got some wrinkling in the skin. If you can take a look over on the side, it's you know pinched there, but it's closed. It's good. You know, it's working. So, uh, want to see? Sure, sure. Let <laughs> demonstrate that thing. All right, let's see here. Let me get this and 
Let's see. All right. Uh, connect to device. Make sure this connects. And connecting. Connected. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll turn on the light. Can you, can you show me the, the transmitting of the data? Is that, yeah. is that via Bluetooth, right? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me reconnect. There's some data for you. Wow. And that's, uh, you know, so one more. Bam. That's so, amazing. Uh, right now, uh, well, right now there's a temperature, but as you can see, it's blank because there's actually an interval. So every so many minutes, it'll turn on the temperature sensor. Now, this actually conserves the battery. So it's temperature over time, okay, right. which is kind of cool, you know, because then you can kind of graph it and chart it and do whatever you want there. You know? But, man, you seem fairly lively. How did the procedure go? Aren't you exhausted? I'm, I'm completely exhausted, but then also filled with adrenaline and filled with excitement. So uh, you can imagine my body's completely in recovery mode because as far as my body knows, Basically, I just got stabbed many times, and I, or I was just in some kind of like medieval battle, you know what I mean, like for my body. So my body's immediately kicked into like, yo, trauma mode. Do you feel one step closer to being that full cyborg? Yeah, just one tiny step closer. Yep, absolutely, and, and happy to be there. Leute wie Tim sehen die experimentelle Beschleunigung der menschlichen Evolution als eine Do-it-yourself-Aufgabe. Im Angesicht der zunehmenden Verdatung und Vermessung unserer Gesellschaft bleibt aber die Frage, wer überhaupt darüber bestimmen wird, was ein Körper kann und was die menschliche Existenz sein wird. Die medical industry really truly believes that it is unethical to attempt to supersede your limitations. How mad is this? I would like to improve a lot of those inefficiencies. I think that that's the best course of action for preserving conscious thought in this universe.